Okay, I'm going to have, have another attempt. I've done a couple of false starts on this one today. I'm going to do a live stream that shows how to convert an N8N workflow into a complete app. So I'm going to try to show you every step of the process. It should work, but it might not because twice today it hasn't worked for me, but with a bit of luck, it'll work this time. The key takeaway is you can do this with any workflow and you can convert it into an app. And if you do run into trouble, which I might today, I can show you some of the methods I use to resolve it. You don't need any coding school skills. Anyone can do this, but you might need a bit of perseverance. And let's get started because I don't know how long this is going to take. So the workflow that I'm going to modify is this one here. It was from the video, how to rank in Google, not on Google. And all we're going to do is remove some of these telegram inputs the outputs and then hook up a webhook to send the data into it and have a responder webhook to send the data back to our web app. So with that said, if you want to try this, you will need an N8N account. There'll be a link in the description to give you a 14 day free trial. The other thing you will need is a Lovable account. So just grab yourself a Lovable account There'll be a link in the description for that as well. So to get started, what we're going to do is this is the workflow automation that was from the previous video that's unmodified. What we want to do is duplicate it. And to do that, you go up to the three dots and hit duplicate. When you do that, you'll get asked to give it a new name and it'll open up a new tab. So that's exactly what I've done here. And if you compare the two, you'll see I've removed these nodes these three nodes and these three nodes and that is it. Now just to speed this up a bit I can bring in this webhook and connect it. I can also add this merge node and respond to webhook node. So the reason we have a merge node is we bind the data out of this node and this node. So to do that we connect this one into input 1 and this one into input two, and then it goes over to this final node here, respond to webhook. So that is our complete setup. The first time we run it, it's gonna take a bit of time because it's gotta go through all of this. Important things to note, in your initial webhook here, you need to have using respond to webhook in this response here, otherwise you'll get errors. Super important, and this is our endpoint. So we do need to copy this. Not just now though, copied it a bit too early. All right, so if you can describe the workflow, you can give it to Lovable and tell it to build the app. I'm gonna to try to speed that up a bit today because I have done a requirements document here. I'll scroll back up to the top. So development brief, it runs through the user journey. You put in the URL, you process it, you wait, and you get the output. So I'm going to copy this document then I'm going to put it into Lovable. No, I'm not. That's the URL. I need to copy this. Put this into Lovable. And then over here, I need to get the webhook. So I've copied that. Put it back here. This is the end webhook URL. Okay. Now we're going to let Lovable build it. Based on our requirements document. Now, while this is building, I'm not going to set up authentication. If we go over to our requirements document here, scroll down a bit, it says technical integration. So we've got a webhook, our response, that's coming back from N8N, two objects. We have timeout. We've got a long timeout period because it can take a while to run the automation. It's going to be a single page app. 
there's no backend required, there's no authentication required, and no database. Now, you could actually add all these if you wanted to convert it into a full like SaaS or a paid app. The way you would do that, you go back over to Lovable. You can see up the top here it says Manage Superbase. So you can connect this into Superbase and it will then allow you to add authentication and also store data in terms of like Stripe payment, you know, whether the account is active or not active or a paid account, not paid account. You can also integrate it with GitHub. Link it out to your GitHub account, which then allows you to hook it up with Netlify or another hosting platform where you can render out your project and then make it available to the world on a custom domain. So they're probably more advanced kind of features, but definitely once you've got this sort of down, you can move on to adding authentication and have a play around with Superbase. With a bit of luck, this is not going to take much longer. I did a previous stream of this today, but the first one worked out fine. I was just trying to actually make this a bit shorter and a bit more consolidated, so I did it again. And the output from the merge node was corrupted, and doing it live is probably not ideal, although it may be entertaining for anyone watching because everything I did didn't work. So who knows? I might hit that same problem again now, but hopefully this will actually work the, like, the way it should. Looks like it's just about finished. Shouldn't be too much longer, I would say. Okay, should get a little sound in a second. There we go. All right, it's getting towards the end of my day here, so I'm really hoping this does work. Okay, so far so good. Here's our input. That's the bit I'm really concerned with. The cosmetics we can fix very easily. So, let's get a copy of the URL. Let's paste it in here. Let's activate our automation. I'll save it first. This is it. So it's running. I've executed it. So it's waiting for the data to hit this, this endpoint. So with a bit of luck, let's see what happens. If I go back over here, we can see it's actually starting to run. So that's, that's a good sign. The endpoint was entered incorrectly. It has scraped the web, so that's what this get details node is doing. Now it's gone to perplexity, then it'll do some research and synthesize the data that's coming out of these two. And this node here is just a code node. It will convert the output into markdown. Another code node, it's really just converting the same information into HTML, which can be rendered a bit nicer if we want to use it in other places. Then we head down to Gemini which has got a massive context window, it can take all the data from up here and generate a PRD. And then the merge node takes the data from the HTML node and over here, the 
PRD and creates an object that the responder webhook node can send back to our app. And the previous problems I've ran into is it can the app accesses one of the outputs being the the PRD, but it's been having trouble getting the actual audit report. So we'll see what happens. It also may time out to the first time. It's still running, so that's good. We're still going. No, it has stopped. So it's actually timed out over here. So we can fix that quite easily. But what we'll do is when this finishes, we'll pin all these nodes and then run it again. It must be just about done. I can start pinning them. Pin, pin, pin. Pin, pin this one, this is the big one. That will do, I'll press save on this, go back over here. So it didn't return anything because it timed out over here. So what I'm gonna do is just refresh this. Then activate our workflow again, so it's waiting. And it'll get a response back pretty quick this time. And unbelievably, the first part has worked. So this is the geoanalysis report. This was the bit I was having trouble with in the two previous streams I did, which I had to abort. So this has worked OK. And the PRD has worked as well. So this is what the app should do first time. I don't know what occurred in the previous builds. If it wasn't live, I would have just kept working through and solved it. But Basically, that is how you take an N8N workflow like this. We remove these nodes. We added in just the webhook node. The only other change I made here is this bit here, which is the json.body.url, because the previous workflow was getting its data from coming in from Telegram. So that's pretty much, that's the only change. And then the merge node, it's just how it is by default. When you, when you add it, it'll have a pend. Two inputs, so nothing to do on that one. And this, nothing again as well, just all coming, all incoming items, it'll send back. So that is the app. It's fully functional and working. We can make it live on the web now. We just go to publish, publish it. And we can head out to the preview site here. with a bit of luck, that is. So here it is. Now, a bit of a hot tip, if you're into SEO and you wanna see what's rendering out in terms of your metadata, meta description, now I don't know if Lovable's actually added it yet, but if I hit Control U, we can see that it's actually added the SEO detail. So we've got meta title here and the meta description. So. This web app is pretty much done. If I wanted to, I could push this out onto a custom domain. I could add authentication. I could add pricing and payments and the database. It's not for today. I think I'm done, but I hope you've got a bit of value from that. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll also link the video that this workflow was based on either of the previous live streams. The first one did work. I just wanted to do a consolidated one. The second one, it got corrupted. I started again and it actually did what it should have on the third attempt. So yeah, the thing with AI coding and if you have no actual coding skills and you're just relying on it, it, it can require a little bit of perseverance to get there in the end. But my advice would be don't give up. Every time you try, you'll learn a bit more and yeah. Good luck. 
See you in the next one.